Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Dangerously Close to Extinction by C.A. King, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter 1. Beware of the eyes of the beast, cold as steel, and the blood running through its veins. Its heart beats only to serve the demon within. Six chimes. He was late. The antique grandfather clock tucked away in the corner was never wrong. Tawny's father had made sure of that. Dinner was family time, and family time was everything. They dressed for their meals, were always punctual, and disturbances weren't allowed. That meant no phones, no televisions, and no music. In fact, the only thing in the room were the clock itself, a fireplace capable of roaring to set the atmosphere, and a far too large oak table, which sat twelve. Only two of those places were ever set. Tawny unfolded a napkin, placing it neatly on her lap, only to fold it again a minute later. Her appetite hadn't received a dinner invitation. Besides, peas were the worst. They were her father's favorite vegetable. That was the only reason the tiny green balls made it on their plates. Her fork pushed them around, hiding them under a pile of mashed potatoes. Over the years, she'd become an expert at Operation Lose the Vegetables, a game meant to test her father's attention levels more than anything else. Tawny caught a glimpse of her own reflection in the silver fork. Most people had a streak of one color or another running through their hair. She had to be different, one section of strands being completely void of all pigment. Others said it was unique to her. It was a curse. That portion refused to be dyed, to, and it wasn't for lack of trying. In the end, it was the same as the peas, just another thing she didn't like but couldn't change. The fork clanged on the plate. Tawny slouched back, letting out a breath of air. There had been times when her father disappeared on one of excavation or another, but he never left her alone for more than a week, especially not without any contact at all. He wouldn't do that to her. They were all each other had. She pus pushed her chair away from the table, allowing the legs to scrape on the hard floor. He would have hated that. He, however, wasn't there to be judge, jury, and ex executioner. A few scratches were the only revenge tactics read readily available at her fingertips. Two uneaten plates of food headed to the kitchen. One foot held down the pedal, opening the garbage. Tawny stood, staring into the black trash bag as if it were a bottomless pit, all of life's an answers lying in wait at the bottom. That was a lie, though. In reality, the only thing in its depths were the discarded leftovers no one wanted. It would have been easy to add to it, too. Simply toss it all in, food, dishes, and cutlery, in her, her own form of rebellion. A moment's satisfaction wasn't worth taking the risk, though. If her father returned to find no china, he'd hire some old hag to play the role of maid and cook. That was something she couldn't live with. Her two hands were plenty capable of handling cleaning up after the pair of them. She sighed, scraping the food off the plates before loading the dishwasher. The kitchen wasn't designed for someone with height. While she wasn't exactly short, the top shelves weren't the easiest to reach. Grabbing a crystal glass from the cupboard meant doing a few tiptoe push-ups. All for a drink. The tap ran for a moment until the liquid flowing from it was cold as ice. Bottles of water were one of the few things worse than eating peas. A vegetable only had the power to ruin the taste buds of a generation. Plastic was destroying the planet. A simple attachment to the faucet had the ability to purify the stream before it ever hit the glass. The investment was minimal, yet people couldn't see what was right before their noses. Heck, most of them couldn't see their noses. Her eyes closed as the cool liquid slid down her throat. Over half was gone in one long sip. Ladies didn't chug, after all. At least that was what her father insisted. She glanced at the glass, wondering if it was now half full or half empty. Somehow, it really didn't matter. She was in charge of the answer, and it could change in a moment's notice. The glass could be filled it to the brim again in a jiffy. Instead, she tossed the remainder out, shrugging her shoulders. Tawny froze, a deer staring at the headlights of an oncoming car. Her gaze locked on her own reflection in the window and the pair of glowing silver eyes glaring at her right through it. The icy exchange sent shivers running down her spine, looking for a place to hide. Something was lurking outside. Even worse, it was watching her. The gasp that came next was a cry for help without words, begging the air around her instead. It didn't answer, not that Tawny expected it to in the middle of a deadly staring contest. She blinked first, 
that was a loss in any book. What that failure was going to cost, she didn't want to know, not that there was time to think about it. The race was already afoot. The steely eyes darted away as quickly as she did. Every window and door in the house needed to be checked. The alarm set. Being alone was worse than peas, the streak in her hair, and plastic bottles put together. Chapter 2 Red puffy eyes, a telltale sign of a bad night's rest. The clear bottle of drops squirted, sending her eyelids into a flurry of blanks. It stung. Connie held open the second lid, hoping for better results. A low buzz stole her attention just as pressure was applied. At least her cheek wouldn't be bloodshot. With her vision still fuzzy, she could barely make out her phone traveling across her bed in waves of vibrations. Tawny lunged for it. Hello? No one answered. She blinked a few more times, straining to see the screen. One hand smacked her forehead for trying to, trying to talk to a text message. She flopped backward. It wasn't her father. Texting wasn't in his skill house. He barely knew how to dial using his cell. No news was good news. She'd heard that enough times in her life, and for the most part, it held true. If something had happened to him, she was the first person the authorities would have come to. That didn't make not knowing where he was any easier. Tony glanced back down at the screen and a message from work. They needed her early. Graymore's barn tours only employed three instructors, one of whom, Desmond, was on holiday. That left Susie and herself to cover seven days of horseback riding lessons and lead the weekly trail rides. They each had one full day off. Hers was just canceled. That probably wasn't ba a bad thing, though. Her plans for the day involved literally doing nothing other than worrying. There was also there was always a riding outfit pressed and ready to be worn in her closet. She grabbed it, changing in a flash, splashing cold water on her face washed away the remainder of the signs of exhaustion. They'd be back before the day was done, though. Bags under her eyes were sure to puff back out, if anyone asked. Seasonal allergies were to be blamed. As with any plan, there was always a downside. Her face was in no condition for makeup. That, in turn, made her look a bit more worse for wear than usual. A tangled web, Tawny mumbled, her own reflection agreeing with her. She wasn't ready to share the news of her missing father. It was hard enough being alone in the house without letting anyone else in on the situation. Pity wasn't what she was looking for. Her father was. A pet would have been the perfect solution. It didn't matter how much she loved animals. That was one subject he wouldn't budge on. Pets were a solid no. He always insisted spending her day at the farm was enough. Horses didn't come home with her, though. A cat would have been her choice. While they didn't do much for protection, they were big on companionship. Tawny sighed. In this case, a dog would have come in handy. She'd never gotten over her fear of them, and it showed. Animals could sense that. If she came within ten feet of any member of the canine family, it barked and growled as if she were the enemy, sending her running in the opposite direction out of sheer fear. She glanced at the fridge, opting out of breakfast. Her thumb swiped her phone screen on in search of a program number for the local cab company. Her father usually drove her. On the occasion he couldn't, a taxi was the backup plan. Her thumb froze. This time, it didn't have to be. One hand dove into her purse, a pink tongue hanging out of her mouth as she searched the bottom. Success! Tawny held up a tiny key that granted her all access. Essentially, it unlocked anything of importance in the house. At least that was what her father always claimed. It was time to put that theory to the test. She headed straight to a cabinet beside the garage door. The key itself was anything but ordinary. In fact, Tawny had no idea what exactly it was made from. Her first guess was ivory, but it had a more ceramic feel to it. In this case, the word bone wasn't a comfortable choice, even less so when considering its details were intricately carved and included a picture of a skull on one side. Her gaze drifted back between the lock and its match. The white completely disappeared, making a clicking sound without even turning. The door popped open. Treasures, hers, for the taking. Tawny's skills were somewhat limited, and decision-making didn't fall anywhere near the top of that list. Experience was what she lacked. Most major choices had been made for her all her life. That was about to change, and it wasn't going to be by using any silly rhymes, either. 
Instead, she pulled all of the options from the hooks where the, they hung, tossing them into a paper cup meant for use at the water cooler. Eyes closed, her fingers took a dive, fidgeting around for a few seconds before locking on to the winner. She glanced at it, a twinkle forming in her eyes. The candy apple red convertible was her favorite. Her ponytail swung in time with the, her hips as she headed out to her father's garage of toys. Just because he never let her drive didn't mean she couldn't. There was a license in her purse, even if it had been collecting a few years' worth of dust. The engine purred with a turn of the ignition. Tawny pressed a red button on a black box, the garage door opening on command. She, all she needed was a multicolored scarf tied around her hair to keep it in place and a pair of oversized sunglasses. The two-door sports car sped down the driveway to the wrought iron front, front gates. The second button on the box activated those. The car came to a stop at the edge of the road. Tawny pulled her glasses down, looking over the top. It was odd to see a taxi on the shoulder. There was no reason for it to be parked there. Her road was anything but a high-traffic area. There couldn't have been many fares. She shrugged it off, making the sharp turn. The convertible slowed, the two vehicles passing. Curiosity demanded a glance. She obeyed its will, side-eyeing the driver and immediately regretting it. Familiar shivers ran down her spine, leaving a trail of goosebumps on, those, on her skin. Those eyes. She knew those eyes. She had seen them the night before and wouldn't soon forget them either. They were colder than ice, capable of chilling her to the bone with a single glance. Tawny gasped. The tiny hairs on the back of her neck stood up. They were on edge just as much as her nerves were. Her heart raced as fast as the engine. She glanced in the mirror. Breathing a little easier, knowing the yellow cab wasn't following her. Chapter 3 It was a beautiful day for a ride in a convertible. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and the temperature was warm enough to warrant the need for a bit of a breeze. A farm, however, probably wasn't the best destination for a leisurely drive. Tawny's butt felt the brunt of every bump in the gravel and dirt lane leading up to the barns. Gnats buzzed around her face under the shadowy cover of low-hanging tree branches. She coughed, inhaling a few. It was too late to put up the top. The bugs would only end up trapped inside with her. She pulled to a stop in the employee parking. Without the cover of trees, the gnats dissipated at least for the moment. A chain rattled. Tawny jumped as a large dog bared its teeth, growling in her direction. Their eyes locked. The animal had no intentions of blinking. Tawny sighed. She'd already lost one steering contest in the past 24 hours. She took a few steps away, slowly edging around her car. The dog barked, lunging, the chain pulling it backward. A few more attempts and its bindings were sure to snap. They weren't meant to handle a large, a long struggle. Her breathing ceased as the dog took a second try. This time, the chains creaked. She exhaled, cringing at the thought of what was coming. The barn door. Tawny glanced over her shoulder. If the links broke, she'd never outrun an animal of that size. Her head snapped forward, reacting to a loud growl. She instantly wished it hadn't. Things were worse than a mere second ago. The canine's mood was deteriorating so too fast for comfort. Gobs of drool poured out from behind sharp teeth. This was a dog that played with children and babies. Anyone else would swear he was the friendliest creature in existence. She'd never done anything to him, yet here they were. He was sizing her up as if she were his next meal or a chew toy, neither of which was appealing. A ginger cat brushed against her legs before strolling out in front of the car. Around there, George was known as the king of the barn cats and a brazen bully to boot. He ruled his turf with an iron paw. No, Tawny whispered. Come back here, Georgie. This was one cat who wasn't about to take orders from a human. Tail high in the air, he strutted straight up to the gnarling beast and swatted him three times. The dog whimpered, retreating from whence he came, only the tip of his snout left visible from within his doghouse. Oh my goodness, Mrs. Graymore said. I forgot to bring puffballs inside. I'm sorry, dear. It was supposed to be Susie to end today. That accident threw us for a loop. Mr. Graymore will tell you all about it. Tony nodded, smiling. Puffballs wasn't the name she would have chosen for a dog that size, but that was probably another reason why she didn't have her own pet. She glanced down at George, trotting along beside her. 
he stopped, letting out a loud meow as a goodbye.